Hello, everyone. Greetings to everyone out there in virtual land. I am Aisha Francis, your teacher for Composition of a City a music program, and welcome to Summer Sessions. This is another installment of Summer Sessions, and I'm so pleased to have a very special guest with me today, Miss Michelle Isaac. So welcome. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for having this conversation with me today. I'm super excited. I've read your bio. I've done a little research on you. So I just wanted to hop into some questions. Um, one of the first things that jumped out to me, well, first, before we hop into that, can you just give a brief introduction about yourself, your musical genre, what you do, who you are, where you're from? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm Michelle. I grew up in Waukegan, Illinois, so just uh, up the lake from Chicago. Um, I play piano and percussion, and I studied composition at the College of St. Benedict in Minnesota, and then also at Roosevelt University here in Chicago. Um, and I work as a composer in mostly the classical genre, uh, write a lot of orchestral pieces, art song, chamber music, things like that. But I love music of all genres and an avid listener of all types of music. Great, thank you for that introduction. One of the first things that really jumped out to me when I was looking at your website and your bio, um, it describes you, of course, as a composer and orchestrator, which you uh, explain yourself, but it talks about how you have a knack for musically witty and whimsical. And then these words stood out, it says that your music is a compelling mix of eccentric storytelling and humor, and then it's grounded in your formal training and mastery of orchestration. Um, one of the things I wanted to ask, just in light of those things, like how it describes who you are as, as a composer and in working with our students and helping them can identify who they are as an artist. What is your voice? What is your sound? How did you identify those things like, okay, witty and whimsical? Because as I read down, it talks about how you basically compose a song with your nieces and, and nephews, which is really cool. Um, so how are you able to kind of identify what your sound is and your style is and make that kind of distinctively you? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I'll say that the, the witty and whimsical and the, the song with, with my nieces and nephews all stemmed from honestly being <laughs> in, a, in graduate school in a music conservatory and just sort of feeling a lot of doubt and a lot of, um, feeling like overwhelmed. Uh, there's a lot of seriousness in a music conservatory. People are very studious and music is a serious topic and all this stuff. And I just like lost all the joy in music, which was really troubling for me. I, I had a really hard time starting out. And then I started realizing that I, I got into this. I love music for the joy in it. And I love making people smile. And so that was sort of me coming into myself and saying, this is what's important to me. Um, so, so one of my first big projects of, of graduate school was taking, I asked my nieces and nephews who were like five and younger to tell me a story and I recorded it um, and then set that, those words to music that sort of uh, amplified their, their personalities. So they're all very just silly and quirky and adorable. Um, and that was not something that you, you found every day in the music conservatory. Um, and so that was really me, me making myself feel more confident in what, what I liked and, and knowing that that's okay too, and this is still valid. Um, and so that, I, I think just finding the, the joy and, and the humor sometimes um, in music has been what, what I'm really drawn to. Okay, that's great. That's really great. Um, your biography was well written. <laughs> I was like, I feel like this really kind of captures who she is. If I didn't know who she was, this gives me a great glimpse of who she is, which is, you know, oftentimes it's really hard to put into words. And that's why I like to ask that question, because if someone were to ask me, who are you musically? Who is my artist name is Asia Marie. And uh, that's my stage name, stage name, my performance name. And sometimes it's just really hard when people are like, who are you musically? How do you kind of describe yeah. yourself in four words and it's so hard to narrow down right so because hard, it can yeah. be very complex um but my my second question is we are kind of defining mood um with our students and how we identify the mood of a song um 
we oftentimes use terms like happy or sad to kind of define the mood of uh, any particular song. Do you think that those types of terms like happy, sad are, are accurate terms? Would you use different terms? Um, yeah, so how would you just kind of respond to that? Yeah, I think those terms are a really great starting point. And I think the thing about music is that it kind of communicates something that words can't. Um, mm -hmm. So you're never gonna find the words that are perfect for what this song means to you and what it makes you feel. But um, happy and sad are definitely categories that you can, you can start to sort things into immediately. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, so I think it's definitely valid and accurate, but it's never gonna, it's never gonna express what the music expresses. Um, and I think there's a lot of music that that blurs the line between happy and sad, um, and and other other emotions that that we can use one word to describe. Um, and I think those are really really interesting because they're you you can listen to them in all sorts of scenarios and in context and you can discuss them because they mean different things to different people. Um, so I think, I think, I think music is sort of on a plane above words in terms of maybe not above a different plane, uh, <laughs> of, of being able to express something. Um, mm -hmm. but it is helpful to assign words to the music to try to wrap your mind around what you're feeling when you listen to it. And when it comes to those terms, happy, sad, or however um, a person would describe the mood of a song, who do you think the term is that? Would you say that the person creating the music, the composer, like I determine if this is happy or sad, or is that left up to the interpretation of the listener? Yeah, I love that question. Um, I think, so to me, music exists in this connection and this relationship between composer, performer, and listener. Um, and I think that could that could all be the same person. It could be different people, um, but it's in that that communication, that connection, that the music actually exists. Um, so I think the answer is both. The the composer can can put happy or sad things into it, and then the listener has their own right to to de determine what it means to them. And they're both correct because it's it's that communication between the two parties that that is the music. That makes sense. No, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> um, and I, I bring this up because so my uh, one of the genres that I do is hip hop music. Um, and this is my own question that I, I wanted to ask you. And uh, there's a, a hip hop artist. I'm not sure if you're familiar with him. His name is Kendrick Lamar. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. If, so when he when he came out, one of his first kind of big radio songs was a song called Swimming Pools. And he, he wrote the song he wrote the song to kind of explain and talk about the the dangers of alcoholism and how alcoholism kind of was uh, not hereditary, but something that like in his family line, it was a problem. Mm -hmm. And in the song, he was basically just explaining just the, the emotions and just the dangers of how this negatively impacted his family. When the song was released, uh, a lot of people interpreted the song differently in such a way where this is like the get drunk song this was a song where people were celebrating liquor like right because the chorus says you know get a swimming pool of liquor you dive in it and kids i am not advocating for getting drunk or, or drinking this is just what the song was about and so as an artist it's like man if you again, if you put something out there and then it, <laughs> it takes on kind of a life of its own, right? Because people are going to interpret it, <laughs> you know, is there a way for an artist to kind of, um, because, you know, in, in a situation with Kendrick Lamar, of course he can do interviews and he can kind of clear things up, but in other genres, you might not be able to, to, to do that, or you might be in it, not be in a position to do that. So what are ways you can say that artists can, is there a way an artist can make things I think it was clear to me if I read the lyrics because um, there is a site called Genius where they have all the lyrics of all the songs and all the different meanings and interpretations. You can read it word for word, line for line, but you're not always able to do that. Is there a way for artists to control the narrative or kind of steer the narrative in such a way or maybe, you know, now artists are creating a lot of content around songs 
and say, I'm going to do a three part series on what this song means and different. I just want you to speak to that a little bit because as a composer and as someone who works with, you know, orchestras, it's a lot different. And in previous conversations with uh, other artists in your genre, they talk about how, um, and I'll ask you this as well. Do you, do you define yourself as a poet and a musician? You know, are you both? Because you do work with songs that don't have words and you work with songs that do have words. So basically my overarching question is, how do you make sure that you kind of like control and steer your narrative when it comes to your music or do you do that? Oh, that is such a good question. Okay. Um, I think my answer would be, you have to control it to, to the best of your ability mm -hmm. and use, use the craft that you have to to accurately express what you're feeling and then at that point it's kind of out of your hands um, as it's communicated to others and your hope is that what you're trying to express is picked up and I think the truth of it is I mean yes I think I think an artist can go to infinite lengths to, to make sure that, that their point is getting across. And I think some really amazing art is created that way and it's very clear. Um, but otherwise, I think that as long as you as an artist are expressing something authentically and that's genuine with who you are and your integrity, then someone, at least one other person out there is gonna pick up on that and get the actual message. And I think that's, the important part um, because of course there's going to be however many other people who aren't going to get it at all or people who will use it the wrong way um, or people who just won't like it um, but you can't really worry about that too much uh, you you just got to have faith that someone's going to be listening to what exactly you're saying yeah that's great and then if uh, lastly is there any advice you can give to our students as they're trying to find their voice and their sound and kind of hone in on what they want to convey, what type of music and message they want to put out into the world. In the beginning, you talked about being um, in school and just having a hard time kind of just like identifying your place, your spot, where do I fit and where do I belong? What is my voice? Who am I? Um, what advice can you give to our students? Because we always try to tell them to be confident. If you wrote it, you know, in our class, we say you, you have to perform that is a part of the course curriculum, but we also want you to be confident and stand flat-footed on what your message is and who you are and what you're putting out there. So what advice could you give to our students as we try to just get them to say, hey, be confident in what you've created in your voice and what you're singing or playing? What advice could you give, give to them? I think um, from a very practical standpoint, I think part of my advice would be just to to always keep listening um, and you you grow as an artist as you consume other art um, and if, if you're wondering what your voice is if you don't feel like you've you've gotten it yet which I don't know if anyone ever <laughs> ever lands in one spot um, that you just got to keep doing it and you got to keep if, if you love it you have to you have to listen to music you have to write constantly you have to play constantly um, I think another thing is that you can't, don't be afraid to continue to discover your voice. Like you, you should be confident absolutely in who you are at this moment, but don't be afraid to, to grow in the next moment and do something different. Um, especially when, when you're still young, like just try stuff out, things that feel right to you. Um, but yeah, I think I think the most crippling thing, and I've had to deal with it a lot, is just this fear of of not being good enough, or not not being accepted, or or just yeah, fear of what other people think of me. Um, I think that can be so crippling to an artist, mm -hmm. and it it can completely take take you over if you let it. So the way to not do that is to just be confident and go out there and say, this is me. Um, and 
be be willing to keep learning and keep growing but never never think that you're you're not good enough because everyone is good enough that's great thank you so much that even inspired me <laughs> as a I, I guess i would consider myself a seasoned performer by now but i still get stage fright every time yeah. uh, i still get stage fright and then once i get the first couple of lines out i just fly from there and i'm, and okay. I'm good michelle thank you i've enjoyed this conversation i wish it could go on longer i'm a self-proclaimed music geek and i love talking all things music and uh, thank you so much for your time today. Now, I do know you have your website, uh, michelleisaac.com. So if our students want to check you out or check out your work, they can find you there. Are there any other places or spaces we can find you in or any upcoming projects we should know about coming from you? I know COVID has slowed a lot down, but I know as yeah. creatives, we're, some of us are kind of locked in and, and still creating. So yeah, uh, absolutely. yeah. So I am, I am, the reason I'm here is I'm working for, uh, on the Lynx Project's Autism Advocacy Series. So that's my next thing coming up, mm -hmm. um, which I'm very excited about. And yeah, so mostly my website, feel free to hit the, the contact button and send me any questions or anything you may have, anybody. Um, yeah, still slowly trying to build back up during COVID, but, but we'll all get there. <laughs> Well, Michelle, that concludes our discussion. Thank you so much. I'm sure our students are going to benefit from this. Again, I'm Asia Francis, also known as Asia Marie, uh, your teacher for composition of a city uh, music program. And this is our summer series. Thank you again, Michelle. Thank you so much.